What are you doing? At, at this point, you're not entertainment blogging. You have a squinch. If I can wake up and look at my body and be happy at the end of the day, problem. I think, when are we going to stop policing women and their bodies? I thought it was true Somizi fashion. Somizi will always make a statement. Why are we even surprised? It was bound to happen. Yeah, one of the, the trapmentation, her beating him the fuck up was bound to happen. But for the mere fact that she tumped him, I'm not surprised. No, 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 no. <laughs> where you have to sign so many waivers of so many things that could potentially go wrong and still choose to do it. I just, why do rich people do this? And then it became, why do rich white people do this? Harder, black, white, Indian, colored. They just typically have to work a lot harder to be noticed, seen, heard. Uh, Gabby, no <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is I, it is just Gatleo. Are you subscribed to the channel? As you are watching this, are you subscribed? You can see I've got a I've got a I've got a glass of wine because the next two videos I'm gonna do are just mm. Okay. But anyway, thank you so much for being here as always. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the videos. Thank you so much. I do want to remind you to also like the videos as you are watching the video and you think, you know what? I'm down with this video. Mm -hmm. I'm down with this video. Please then like the video. It is so important. It helps get my video out there. It helps recommend my video to more people that can potentially become part of the JK squad. Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited about this particular video because I have never done this concept before and I feel like I always get messages here and there in my DMs or on Twitter. Somebody will take a screenshot of something and say to me, what do you think of this? Somebody will take a screenshot of something, what do you think of this? So then I thought to myself the other day, I was like, you know what? I want to do a video where whatever controversial topic that you would like my opinion on, tell me what it is. So I put it down on Instagram and I put it there and I said, what would you like my opinion on? So it's like a my take kind of video. So this is my take on controversial issues based on what you have asked me. So what would you like to hear me say with regards to it? And I'm so, so excited. So we're gonna get right into it. I had to write them down. So I've written them down. Don't be surprised if I'm looking down because I'm looking at the controversial topics, chat. Okay, so someone asked me the 50-50 conversation that Gabrielle Union had about her and her husband. And I was like, man, we are starting heavy. So because we are starting heavy, I'm going to just have a quick sip. Thank you. Mm. They're cutting the grass outside, if you can hear that. I've connected my mic, so I'm hoping that it's not going to be too problematic, but it is what it is. Anyway, so I heard this thing and I went and I looked at, I watched this video where she was being interviewed and she was essentially saying that her and her husband split everything in their family down 50-50. And no, <laughs> no, um, for me, if I have to be completely honest about this is that I do not feel that that is a partnership between a married couple. I don't feel like you are saying that now we are moving from two and we're becoming one if every single thing is going to be split 50-50. But I am also very cognizant of the fact that financially, you're never really going to be in the same place as your husband unless you are you know, doing the same job, you're getting the same paycheck and all of that or you're never going to be in the same place in terms of what you earn as your partner or your spouse, right? So we're talking in terms of marriage here. Cut out the whole 50-50 idea in terms of just a relationship or people who are dating. I still don't agree to that. I still don't subscribe to that line of thinking, but I feel more strongly about disliking it and unsubscribing to that line of thinking, especially when it comes to a marriage. Because I feel like, 
We're not going to be the same financially. And I don't see why we should say, okay, we've got a kid. So school fees is 100K a year. I'm going to pitch in 50. You're going to pitch in 50. Then we've got a bond. Bond is 5 million rand. Pitch in 50, pitch in 50. I really don't see how that essentially then means you are in a marriage. It almost means like you are... It's 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 more business like and transactional for me. It just doesn't make any sense for me to call this a marriage and a union between two people. I don't feel like you. We need to subscribe to that kind of line of thinking. I genuinely feel like it is a partnership. We are together because we love each other. We're creating a life together. So now incorporating finances to such a point where you are deliberately cutting every single thing down the middle just to me just doesn't make it takes the fun out of it being a marriage yes i do agree with the fact that we have to at the end of the day pay bills and i am of that school of thought that I would never just allow my husband to take care of everything. I would never allow him to take care of the house, take care of the, 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 the children's school fees, make sure that the house is furnished, make sure. I, I would never do that. I would, however, make sure that certain elements of our marriage will be catered to by me, will be taken care of by me, and certain elements of the marriage will be taken care of by him. But it mustn't be this thing that even when we go out and we go out to dinner, or we go out to lunch or we go on vacation and the vacation costs like 50k now we must take out 25 25 come on i think it's it must be sort of like a conversation that okay you'll handle this i'll handle this um you'll handle this i'll handle this but to actively make sure that you split every single thing that involves money For me that just does not make sense i think that's something that is done a lot in uh relationships where financially everybody is kind of stretched and 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 it's really really tough going uh normal folk marriages right not a multimillionaire so for me to to me that was just like Nah, bro. So the concept of 50-50 is just a concept I do not agree with, period, point blank. I don't agree with it. Do I agree to contributing to a relationship and contributing to a marriage financially in some aspects? Yes. Um, but then again, it is the 21st century, each to their own. Um, you know, your, your marriage should be what you make it to be, how it should feel right for you and your partner. But I still hectically disagree with uh, the stance of Gabrielle Union. For me, that was just like, no ma'am. <laughs> no ma'am. Gabby, no ma'am. <laughs> no ma'am. Was, is love enough? No. I think I've mentioned this many, many, many times. Let's just make sure that's on silent. I think I've mentioned this many, many, extremely many times where I've said that love is absolutely not enough. It will never be enough to sustain a relationship. There are personalities, there's characters. People change over the years. Um, you might meet your partner at a certain place in their life where they are like this. And 10 years later, they're a completely different person. You might love them even differently. And it never is enough. Financial situations could cause your whole dynamic, your, whole di your home dynamic to change, your marriage, relationship dynamic to change. Will love be enough then? No, absolutely not. It must be a space where you come to each other, you find each other, you choose each other, but there's also an understanding of there's things that we need to contribute to this to make it work, to make our specific relationship work, to make this uh, 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 an undeniably grown, uh, spectacular, magnificent king and queen kind of relationship. We need to make it work and love alone is not going to sustain that. So for me, that's very, it's an easy no. Love is never really enough to sustain a relationship. We can talk about it all the time and say that love, yes, love must be the core of the relationship, but everything that steam stems from it, the, the streams and the tributaries that come from it are not love. And, um, sort of love is the ocean and every single stream or tributary that comes 
towards the ocean is money, is, is this, is trust, is this, is this. So it's not just love. It's, it, it never, it'll never be enough. Uh, please. Um, South Africa's energy crisis. What do you even mean, bro? We've been in an energy crisis for the past 10 years. At this point, I don't even know what you want me to say. At this point, it's just like, it's what I find really strange about the energy crisis right now, currently where we're at, we've been sitting at stage three, between stage three, one, stage three, one, for the past couple of weeks, at the very least, as I'm recording this, three weeks, right? And this changed overnight. We didn't even know about it. Suddenly we're on stage three. There wasn't any communication as to why are we on stage three? Why has this suddenly changed when we've been at stage five and six for the past I don't know how long? Um, I think it's detrimental. Of course, the energy crisis is really, really detrimental for the economic future of the country. What do you even mean? Um, businesses are suffering because of the energy crisis. Uh, home lives are suffering because of the energy crisis. Kids are struggling at school and not being able to put in school and put in time to school and whatever because at six o'clock in the evening on a winter's evening you're out of power and at that point you're doing your homework so it's it it really does mentally impact um everyone it mentally impacts all of us there is no south african right now who's got access to a cell phone who is a grown-up and an adult and 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 has things to do and all of that and even students high school and all of that who does not have access to the escom app Everybody has it. We all look at it every single day because we need to know at which point are we going to be out of power at work and at home or at school and at home. And it's really, really very destructive for the economy. It's destructive for mental health. But also at the same time, I feel like, you know what? We, the reality of South Africans is we keep, we're a very strong nation. We just keep trudging on. Like we make do um, and I think with regards to the energy crisis is because we've been running our mouths about it that we're just damn tired. At this point, we're just like the biggest, most concerning thing to us is putting food on the table, being able to take our kids to school, being able to, to pay our bills. That is the most concerning thing to us and not necessarily the energy crisis anymore. It was, it was, but it's secondary right now because the most concerning thing is unemployment and being able to put food on the table. It's really, really rather frustrating. Uh, women having the upper hand when it comes to the law. M women don't get canceled like men do. I am inclined to disagree with this one. I think that um, I don't... With certain aspects, I don't think that women have the upper hand when it comes to the law. I don't think that women have the upper hand when it comes to um, industries, work demographics. Um, I don't think, I feel like women, more especially black women, but we're talking about women in general, I feel like women have it extremely hard. And the reason why I say that women don't have the upper hand when it comes to the law with context to South Africa, with gender-based violence, I, need I say more? With context to South Africa, how women, I don't quite remember the stats anymore, but a woman who can be in the very same position as a man, she would typically earn, tw I think it was 23 or 24% less than what her male counterpart with, would earn. So I don't really agree with that. I don't think that... Um, uh, um, in, in terms of cu cancel culture and when we're looking at it from a social perspective, that's a very, very different conversation. But I think when it comes to law and economics and demographics and family life, home, cultural life and all of that, women do definitely not. We don't have the upper hand with anything. Um, I feel like women actually have to work a lot harder, black, white, Indian colored They just typically have to work a lot harder to be noticed seen heard um, There was something that I was listening to that uh, someone was saying a woman's silence is powerful 
I don't know. I think we, we have to speak up as women when it comes to so many things or else our silence will often be overlooked as a sense of um, we're in agreement as a sense of acceptance. So we have to speak up on things like gender-based violence. We have to speak up on things like unfairness in the workplace, sexual harassment in the workplace, all of those kinds of things. So I don't think women have the upper hand. In actual fact, I think that it's much harder, um, even especially when it comes to the law. I really, that's, that's my standpoint. Ocean Gate. The next one is Ocean Gate. My God, what do you even mean okay so for me initially when the ocean gate reports came out i was just like this is frightening and um why do rich people do this and then it became why do rich white people do this and then it became what in the world is this little cocoon what is this little you know this titan what is this thing man come on and then i saw the logitech um joystick and i'm just like you are running a submarine that is going to go to the depths of the Titanic with a joystick. And there is no communication from you guys to everybody who's above sea level. Once you are past a certain point, are you joking? And now there are people, let me tell you something. What, what boggled my mind, okay, about Ocean Gate was the fact that so many people had already gone down to see the, the, the Titanic, right? James Cameron himself had gone down to the Titanic. He's the one who's holding the record of the amount of times that he's been down to the Titanic, 33 times. So this is not something that hasn't been done yet. That's fine. The problem is there were so many reports that came in from people who worked for this company, for Ocean Gate, who said the engineers and all of that who were just like, nah, buddy, this is very problematic, right? And I'm just thinking, why? Why why when you're a billionaire? Why when you're a white person? I think there was an, an Indian dad as well with his son. Really, really heartbreaking stuff. Why you have all the money in the world? to do something else, why would you go down to the depths of the ocean in something, this cocoon-like thing where you have to sign so many waivers of so many things that could potentially go wrong and still choose to do it? I just... And then when it happened, this is what got me about Ocean Gate because when it happened... The families, after the people sadly passed away and all, the, 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 the submersive, submersible itself uh, imploded and all of that, the families were very quiet. The wives of the husbands were quiet because now they are left with all these billions. They are billionaires now by association. And that's the dark part of me, right? But for me, it was just like, are you, are you kidding? Are you actually really joking? What is this? This doesn't make any sense. And then I had to go on to TikTok and my God, TikTok. Primo's TikTok. Primo's TikTok of the submersible. And he was like, ah, and I was just like, oh my God, how do I laugh about this? But then again, in times of stress and worry and whatever, people tend to laugh to get to release the nervousness, the, the, the nervousness surrounding the whole situation. Very, very unfortunate situation. Very unfortunate. It wouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened. Um, yeah, the truth of the matter is I saw some TikTok with a, with a white guy who was saying, you know what you didn't see in that submersible? Black people. Because we ain't finna do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, the next one is Mithali and Musa. So now this comes at the time where um, it was, it's just after the Durban July as I'm filming this. And uh, Musa came out with a, uh, a, a, a tweet. I saw the tweet talking about how Mithali is now at the Durban July and uh, Musa is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> basically he's, uh, he's saying that Michali uh, beat him up at her partner's offices 
Wonderful. Okay. Uh, my opinion on that. At some point, it was going to happen. Um, I feel like Musa just just did not quit when it came to Michal. He was just da-da-da-da-da-da, and everybody has their breaking point. And I worry also that why was he there, you know? Uh, what what caused for him to go there? Now, these are the questions. I don't worry, but these are the questions that came into my mind, Wuti. Okay, why were you at uh, Mr. So-and-so's Officers, what were you doing there? Horobo Kopanel Michali there, what were you doing there? Michali's got a right to be there. What in the world were you doing there? Uh, maybe he was called to the officers, maybe he wasn't. But for the mere fact that she tumpered him, I'm not surprised. I feel like he's actually gotten off quite lightly with a lot of uh, celebrities and influencers and all of that. He's gotten off quite lightly. I'm not a fan of Musa. I, I really genuinely feel like he is quite vile. Um, the things he says are just underhanded, below the belt, quite just, just degrading, man. Like I, I just, I don't understand how there is a whole group of people that follow this person and like this person and, and agree with his content. So, uh, uh, that goes to say that, uh, like according to me, um, it's, it's one thing to report you have people like Sims and Owami and whatever that are reporting on content creators and celebrities and all of that. It's another thing to actually insult them and degrade them and blah, blah, blah. And um, I think Musa had take, ha has taken his <clears throat> entertainment reporting that low, way below the belt. And, 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 and Michali, hey, sister. Like, yeah, Michali on it was a long time coming. Michali, I, the things that he said about her, uh -uh. you might not agree with Michali or her lifestyle or her whatever. You might agree with it. That's fine. It's not for you to decide or then insult and down and, and degrade and this and that. No. And, and call someone names and then go after their family as well. No. It was bound to happen. Yeah, but the, the trapmentation. Her beating him the fuck up was bound to happen. <laughs> I was just there. Anyway, uh, stay at home girlfriends was the other one. I did a whole entire candid with Kat about stay at home girlfriends, which by the time this video goes out, you will have seen. So you know what my opinions are on stay at home girlfriends. So we're not going to get into that. Uh, some Gaga's Durban July outfits. Are we surprised? Like my chat is, so the theme was out of this world or something like that. And my favorites were Jessica Ngosi and uh, uh, and Nandi. Um, uh, uh, what's his surname? Ndida. What's his surname? Msadwa Zeixi le na. Msadwa Zeixi. Eh yeah. Um, I really loved her outfit. Uh, I loved Nomzamo's outfit. However, I felt like I'll put them up here so you can see them. I I I felt like it was just a stunning outfit, but not necessarily in alignment with with the out of this world thing. Uh, but I loved it. I thought it was sexy. She's just sexy. She's just hot, bro. She's hot. Um, and then, <clears throat> some Gaga. I think what, what put me on the floor when I saw it is when he came in with the pyramid. And I thought, only Somizi will go to town with his Durban July outfits. And I was living for it. I was just like, okay. I wasn't crazy about the other ones. I loved the entrance uh, because, I, I don't know, he had five outfits or six, seven. I don't know how many outfits he had. Uh, I don't really follow this kind of stuff. But um, I really enjoyed the entrance with the pyramid and the men. I thought that was fantastic. I thought it's in true Somizi fashion for him to rock up and make an absolute statement. Um, I don't know what the, what the, what the out of this world pyramid sign signification is with that. That's none of my business. It's fine. I don't care to know. But what I did feel like was very much akin to the theme of out of this world was the blue outfit. I'll put it somewhere here so you can see it. That one I thought, what is this, my darling? Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely out of this world. So I did, I didn't agree with that. Uh, but I wasn't crazy about any of his other outfits. Um, but uh, the out of this world one, the blue one, yeah. And the pyramid entrance, I thought it was 
true Somizi fashion. Somizi will always make a statement. Why are we even surprised? You know, Ranaka terminating Kai FM contract due to mental health issues. <clears throat> That's all I'm going to say. As a mental health advocate myself, working in the mental health space where I coach, I'm a mental health uh, coach, life coach, I couldn't agree more. If Dineo felt that I cannot be in Kaya FM and I'm terminating my contract because it is affecting me mental health wise, nothing more I have to say than kudos to you, Miss Mamas. Because at the end of the day, we have our careers, we have our families, we have our friends, we have our whatever. But the most important thing is mental health. Once that part of your life is okay, everything else will fall into alignment. If this isn't okay, this is gonna, it, it, it's going to be destructive. You are going to be destructive. Hence why it is so important to make mental health a very integral part of uh, your life that you continuously work on. It's a lifelong thing. Whether we like to believe it or not, it really is a lifelong thing. So you have to continuously work on it. And if you are working on it, it's going to make sure that all these other things that stem from your life, that come from your life, are in a better space. So if she made that decision in the sense, you know what, I'm cutting for the sake of my mental health. Ain't got nothing more to say. What's next? Pearl Tusi and her revealing jumpsuit at a fashion event. And then she's absolutely smashing. I think she's stunning. I think she's stunning. I think when are we going to stop policing women and their bodies? This is, this is my chat. Pearl Tusi can be 45, 55, 35, 25. She's a grown ass woman. She should be able to wear whatever the fuck she wants to wear. And I thought when I saw it, I'm like, damn. And she was dancing and I'm like, damn. I, 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 uh, I, the only thing I didn't, I, I didn't agree with was, was the nips showing, right? I, I was just like, okay, I, I would have then had some stars, man. I would have had some stars or I would have had some, some circles, or some, some bling bling or something, whatever. But everything else I was just like absolutely smashing. What do you even mean? Look at her breasts. I thought she was absolutely stunning because the reality is what we're going to do. Women are already policed enough as it is. Women are already having it hard as it is. Black women even worse. But the reality is, Pultusu is looking smashing as fuck. I'm not going to lie. I thought she was stunning. And then she started dancing and I'm like... <sighs> then I looked at her, right? I looked at her and I'm like, damn, she's, she's just... Yeah. <sighs> she's hot. But I never saw it in the sense, of, no, she's a mother. She shouldn't be dressed like that. Why? Who is to dictate how she should dress? Who is to dictate how anyone should dress? Why are we allowing men to walk into Durban Julys and whatever with just like a thong on and a little bit of sheer material and saying, oh, that's hot, that's fetch, that's sexy, <laughs> that's fetch. <laughs> that's hot when you know, you know, that's hot, that's sexy, yes, what, 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 what. But then if Pearl does the same thing, it's seen as a problem for who? I think Pearl did, she was at a freaking club. Like the one that I saw, she was at a club, bro. What is the problem? I think we need to just stop policing women's bodies. It's disgusting. It's inappropriate. Um, you can feel however you want to feel about the way that she was dressed. Personally, for me, the only thing I would cover was here. But outside of that, yes, sis. if I had a body like a yarr, you fucking... If I had a body like that, yeah, man, I'd be making shit shake. Like that. Woo! My opinion on BBLs. Same concept. Why are we policing women's bodies? A lot of the time, when someone does some work to their body, it is because they're feeling insecure about something. If I go and I take all my teeth out and I grind them down and I come back with a Colgate smile and it's veneers, I will tell the world 
if I talk about it, if I'm a celebrity or an influencer or whatever, I will tell the world I've felt insecure about my teeth all my life. I've always felt insecure about my teeth. So if I go and I do a, a, a veneers, why do people not see that as a problem but want to go and see BBLs as an issue? Again, it's when women do things like this. When men do things like this, when men go and change and alter their bodies and do whatever, ain't nobody saying a damn thing. More than actual fact, people are actually saying, Woody, yes, sis, born of a bunch away now. But if a woman is going to go and do the very same thing where she wants to feel sexy, where she wants to just change up her nose a little bit and whatever, she will be judged. But that's the reality of society today, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't that the reality of society today where women are going to be judged at all costs, all the time about what they do, how they do it, and especially what they do with their bodies? So what to Rostello and the PBL? So what to Re Kolu and the PBL? So what to Re Sayen and the PBL? Who cares? It's their bodies. If I can wake up and look at my body and be happy at the end of the day, problem. The last one is is a big one. Entertainment blogger squabbles. Now, if you are following South African entertainment blogging, Bo Owami, Bo Sims Right. Uh, and the other hands. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Bobo, unfiltered, giddy, and all of that. What do I think of that? It's nothing new. Eventually, it's going to happen. At some point, there's going to be squabbles in the beauty sphere. At some point, there's going to be squabbles in the uh, uh, entertainment blogger sphere. Uh, Owami loves to say oh, she's the blogger that they blog about. She's not lying. She is the blogger that they blog about. Um... I don't have a problem when the bloggers themselves understand that if you are going to talk about someone, whether it's a celebrity or an influencer and whatever, and you're going to talk about them and report on them, report the news, report the whatever, you, excuse me, you cannot be surprised if another entertainment blogger is going to talk about you. The only place where I draw the line is, again, as I was saying with regards to Musa Kaula, is that when you downright become degrading, insulting, uh, if if and you're doing it to such a point where you are actually showing your disdain for that person, you actually don't like this person. That's where I'm just like, what are you doing? At, at this point, you're not entertainment blogging, you have a squinch, you have a squabble, you have a something that you want to share about this person that you're consistently making videos about them over and over and over again, even when those videos are just nonsense. You know what I'm saying? So as long as those people are expecting and knowing that if you're going to talk about other people, other entertainment bloggers might just talk about you. It's the nature of the game. It be like that sometimes. The only part where I think we should draw the line is when you're going to be insulting. If you're going to be insulting, uh, be degrading, be, be, be just horrible. That's where I'm just like, nah, then, nah, then you're not, you're not really entertainment blogging, are you? You're just using your platform as a way to bash someone else, as a space in which you can bash someone else. And the people who entertain that, the people who comment to that and say, Enevela, Simzu Uso, Oami Uso, Enevela, Enevela, the Silicon fail. I said what I said. You can't condone wrong with wrong. You just can't. That's all from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a like, a thumbs up. If there are other controversial trending topics that you would like me to talk about, put it in the comments down below and we could end up making this a series as well where we can talk about whatever is trending. I'm not afraid to talk about these things. Hence why I did talk about Mikali. I did talk about Musa. I did talk about whatever. 
I don't feel some type of way about uh, talking about them. Um, I'm just going to approach it from a very mature perspective. I'm not going to approach it because I'm trying to get clicks and likes and views. Um, but I will give my opinion on certain things. So if there are certain things you'd like me to uh, comment on so that we can make this my take a series, then definitely let me know down below. If you don't want to share it publicly, definitely reach out to me on my Instagram. Would love that. Give this video a like. Let's try and get this video to over a thousand likes. I would so appreciate that from you guys so, so much. And um, I'm going to go. I've got one more video to film, which is so, so exciting. So I'm going to go. Thank you very much for choosing me over and over again. Until the next one, keep it safe, keep it locked, be kind to others, and look after yourself. And I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, bye.